I am Benita. Greetings to you all. On behalf of the Organization for Rare Diseases India, I would like to welcome you today to today's Care for Rare webinar. So as we all know, September has arrived, which is celebrated as the Pain Awareness Month. And rightfully, today we have a chronic pain warrior, Dr. Anuba Mahajan. She founded Chronic Pain India in 2017 and has been working on spreading much needed awareness and being a strong advocate on chronic illnesses, pain, and invisible disabilities to help those suffering in silence. She's also certified as a facilitator of the theater of the oppressed. So it brings us great joy to have Dr. Anuba with us today. We welcome you and we request you to proceed. Meanwhile, if anyone has any questions that you would like to put forth, you can put, uh, do so by putting them down in the chat. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. So you're already aware that um, I'm going to talk about chronic pain. And uh, if you must, you must have gone through the post. Uh, so you are aware that I'm going to talk about the psychological impact it has, along with how we can cope through it, because it's a very important thing. I mean, we don't realize uh, the impact these issues have and we have been neglecting it since ages uh how uh, benita already mentioned yes september is actually known as the pain awareness month across the world and we've been like raising awareness whole of september and um, i'm glad i am speaking today on the day when we are actually it's this first day it's like september one the starting of september pain awareness month now, I'm not going to go with this PPT is not a conventional PPT, okay? So, I don't want you to read pointers here. I don't want you to, you know, just uh, read whatever is there on the PPT. There's nothing much to read on the PPT. What I really want you to do is look at the PPT and, you know, just try to visualize, imbibe, and try to listen to my voice and try to understand what I'm speaking. Try to keep your focus towards visualizing because I really want you to understand this point and because it is for the betterment of a lot of people. Okay, so let's start with the first most unconventional yet conventional question. What is chronic pain? So chronic pain is actually any uh, pain issue that goes, uh, you know, uh, exists in your body and you're feeling it more than 12 weeks. Anything which goes above it is considered chronic pain, but anything before 12 weeks is called acute pain. Um, you can take an example of a fracture or a bruise because of which you're getting pain. So that's, or a muscle, you know, tightness or stiffness because you went for exercising, that's acute pain. But when any, any certain uh, pain which reaches the level above 12 weeks is considered as chronic pain. I mean, uh, if I go with the world statistics here, you know, 30% of a world population suffers through it. Approximately 30%. And we are a com uh, you know country of 1.4 billion and trust me, we don't have data here. So I, I mean, not proper data statistics to, you know, even conceptualize and figure out how much percentage of burden is there. There are a few studies which mention that, you know, uh, there are some studies done by uh, doctors which state that, you know, um, there is a percentage of 19.3% of our population which is suffering. And the this study is done by uh, Dr. A.K. Saxena in 2018. And then there is another study which was done in a rural area in Chennai where, uh, where it was figured out that 65% of that rural area, population living in that rural area was suffering from some kind of chronic pain. Now here, I want to dig deeper a little and tell you that chronic pain is just one key factor. It's not a condition or an illness on its own. You know, it's basically a symptom to many conditions which can vary from you know, uh, congenital conditions to genetic diseases to autoimmune conditions, any traumatic accident, a car accident, maybe, or, you know, an uh, iatrogenic 
scenario where there is a mishappening that happened due to you know medical negligence all these uh, issues and the illnesses which come through them are actually have a key factor of chronic pain and yet usually it just gets neglected somehow you know because it's not visible i in this image you can see i try to make it visible by you know putting these colors and flares around because a person who is suffering from chronic pain and is a part of this um webinar can pretty much probably can pretty much relate to it and understand what i'm trying to say and uh, you know but on the other hand when we come to the society there is so much judgment that just comes in because of the invisibility and there is you know a uh, so much of impact on it because chronic pain actually impacts not just you by giving you the excruciating pain it actually impacts your quality of life and daily living there are so many symptoms that a disease has and already all the other factors are already comprehending in and you know giving you these symptoms which you never had or never felt on and there are people there are kids who never got the opportunity because they're living with it since you know childhood being a you know a congenital condition or a genetic issue or an autoimmune illness which triggered way too early in their life and they never got to have that normal feeling or sensation they're living with those weird symptoms and all yet knowing all this we are categorized now these are some of my you know favorite quotes and i'm going to just you know speak them out to you in certain tones i've heard people using them so i'm going to start from the very first one you know what are you suffering from never heard of it are you faking it you look totally healthy to me you know what it's all in your head you just finding excuses for not working you're lazy that's all okay you such an attention seeker probably start concentrating on your energy on something useful you know you don't look sick to me how can you be in pain all the time that's not possible i mean and one of my favorite one is yeah you know my god you too young to be sick god bless you and um, i'll end with the you know the term which everybody uses you know there you or everybody has bad days in their life it's nothing that makes you any special i mean yeah everybody has bad days in their life they do but that doesn't mean that you know a person is not going through something probably you just not try to listen to them probably you know these feelings are too hurtful yet they just suffering through it and they really want your understanding but that understanding doesn't exist they just living with that debilitating pain fatigue weakness insomnia they just want it to stop yet it isn't and you know it also leads to a lot of cognitive dysfunction sometimes people just forget things and it's normal it's it doesn't mean you have to really you know blame the person brain fog hits in there are learning differences mental health issues rise up or if you already have a mental health condition and uh, sadly you just get win the lottery of getting another illness along with it it's like just you know storing too many things but you don't have places to really store it at and you know and these all issues are usually invisible because these are body function impairment not structural impairments happening i mean the image in front of you that i have portrayed can you can you see any disfigurement in that image other than she just being irritated and that face expression which actually sometimes just goes hiding like it's hard to hidden and you know you just see what you want to see you just see the you know one side of it the reality is just hidden where on the other hand all you see is the person is still smiling 
and you know there's no body structural issue happening so oh how is this person having something very very bad that's not possible and along with this now just imagine and try to understand somebody who's not yet diagnosed and doesn't even know what they're suffering from okay like i mean i should try to i hope i'm able to make you understand this thing because there are a lot of people because these conditions are not yet recognized in a country in many different ways they're not they're not proper healthcare policies there you know we lag in uh, general policy making and legal uh, issues we lag advocacy we lag awareness i mean that's the reason we are here for this this webinar all together and a person who is listening to all these questions you know getting question mobbed stigmatized stereotyped by the society by people by family friends and i mean getting asked what are you actually going through what is happening with you and you have no idea because you are still trying to you know you are still trying and going to different different doctors just to know what exactly is happening to your body you are still running from one place to the another meeting uh, you know different doctors and uh, just running from one doctor to another scared inside doesn't know what to do con confused perplexed and over the top all the misdiagnosis this just comes in between and you just now know what to do what to tell the people what to tell the society okay what is happening with me i also don't know and you know just to give you a better example of pain i would re i'm going back to the previous image the commonest biggest example that we all understand is cancer pain because we, the bulk load and the healthcare load of cancer is up high and you know and uh, so it's visible and we have so many organizations working on it or our governments are putting effort there are so many dedicated hospitals for cancer and if a person is having a metastasizing cancer uh, by metastasizing or or malignant cancer i mean in layman terms a cancer where you know the irregular and wrong cells that are building in your body which leads to cancer are actually growing up and they're not stopping the chemotherapy is not nothing is working and they go through excruciating pain and you see them you can empathize you can understand that you know but when it's that it's not cancer when it's not visible you've not heard about the disease specifically when it comes to rare diseases like there's no empathy you don't want to understand what is happening and there are so many people who have been not diagnosed on time only because of these issues they don't know which doctor to go to where to just go and you know uh, who will be the right person who will tell you what exactly and really you have to do i mean i'll take an example of mr vikram bhat here many of you might be aware that um, he is a producer he's a film producer you know he suffers from fibromyalgia and he uh, in one of his interviews in fact many interviews he's literally openly told that he was undiagnosed for 12 years imagine 12 years of your life not knowing what you are going through and all these symptoms are still there and you have to fight it out you don't even know how to but it's there uh, i remember we came across this girl one time she wanted to write her story and this girl wanted to write her story that i'm not diagnosed since 4 years and i still don't know what i suffer from and that's a real reality and you know yet it is just ignored the doctor is like okay it can be this okay can be that experimenting upon you at times not knowing what you have not referring you to the right doctor at the right time and all these reasons together just compile it and make it even worse for the person on the other hand you know the reason why and you know you kind of go in this cluster this cloudy area where you just shredded you're just in the worst phase of your mind where 
your symptoms are real it's physical it's there yet you just overshadowed and you just gloomed into a place where you're just not understood and some of the reasons i would mention here for this are actually lack of education around it most of these conditions are rare or doesn't have you know high healthcare burdens by high healthcare burden i mean you must be aware of diabetes chronic heart conditions chronic respiratory issues asthma copd is something covid has made everybody understand but before that probably people didn't even know what copd is blood pressure high the bp low bp hypertension hypotension these are the high highest burden loads we have because the number of people suffering through it is higher but the number of people suffering through chronic pain conditions and you know rare diseases and you know particularly one illness the bulk load is so low that the you know the it just gets ignored by the society and the government because they are just you know just focusing on the higher bulk load because they feel that while containing the higher bulk load we are decreasing the issues of the you know the society but in reality you're not realizing the small small bulk loads of different illnesses together makes actually a approximate population of 30% in a world and going through this journey you're pretty perplexed like uh you can see there is this uh, image on the on the slide that you were on this uh, the second story which you can see where tumor is written tumor in like leg do i have cancer it's actually one of the amazing diagnoses i got i mean i was diagnosed after one year and um, i had gone to this diagnostic center because i was asked that you have to get this specific mri done which is only done at this particular center and uh, it costed me around 30000 back in 2014 and um, the 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 uh, you know it's called mri neurography and, and then the person who was a skilled technician to do it was not available at that time just to make money they just you know gave me an appointment they did not do the pro uh, mri properly they couldn't figure out the problem and they could just see some semi blurred image there which they concluded as a tumor and they gave us a call basically the call came to my mother and i just took the call from her and i was on the phone and i was like yes pretending to be my mother and i am told that uh, hello ma'am we want you to come back to the diagnostic center uh, i think your your daughter has a tumor in her leg imagine you are told you have a tumor in your leg you don't know how where how it happened but you're confused okay do i have cancer fine let's deal with it let's go to the diagnostic center i mean till then i never used to actually use the word doctor in front of my name and i used to just go as a patient that was the first time i actually wrote dr anubha mahajan and i was very confused and i just told them that uh, i am a doctor and i can see and read mris can i see my mri before getting another mri done because i'm going to pay another 30000 now why am i you know putting this word 30000 again and again because we don't realize that even the amount of money just goes in figuring out a diagnosis itself sometimes is high sometimes because your condition is rare or something which the doctors are not well specialized in or your medicines are not available in india and you are, those are called orphan drugs and you have to get them from outside trust me they are very very expensive so i was not okay with that 30000 to be given again and i demanded to see my ex my mri and i told i am a doctor and they got scared and i came to know that they accidentally ended up giving me an appointment with a technician who was not well versed with this technology so they want to repeat it and they apologized i didn't pay the 30000 they just did it for free the only thing that and you know i don't have cancer i was not diagnosed with cancer they found severe you know swelling in my distal nerve root by distal nerve root in layman terms i would say my left side hip area the nerve which is going from there that was swollen 
and that was the reason that bulge was appearing in the mri which apparently ended up coming to after a few more months of digging in to a diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome which has nothing to do with cancer except the fact that the pain level i live with is above cancer and you know there have been multiple stories like this which you can read here and you know that fear that okay the next doctor might be the wrong doctor too are you sure should we go to him we're going to pay so much money and uh, okay this is a private hospital what now what else where where should we go now and this 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 fear just imbibes in and you just get engrossed in it so much that anxiety depression everything just pulls in even a normal person who stressed out because of work can have anxiety and depression no yet work stress is understood but just going through this because you don't understand it it's not understood and you know when you finally get the diagnosis trust me that is one beautiful feeling it takes you out of the situation it just bring you to a scenario where you just feel okay now i know what i am going through so i have an answer but you know the the journey doesn't stop there it kind of increases from there you do have a doctor who's told you but you don't know if that doctor will stay for long many a times patients are just left in the middle because they they're just complaining of pain muscles past see this and that and the doctor is not able to understand okay and you know many a times the doctor just sends you to a psychologist or psychiatrist stating it's a mental health disorder not even sometimes even doing the blood tests and mris nothing has been done you just told that go meet a psychologist or a psychiatrist because i think you are just making it all up and uh, it just increases it further i mean calling a physical issue mental i mean imagine yourself being there will it actually make you feel happy oh i have a mental issue so and now i know what i have no it won't you need a better understanding because of all these issues this real reality situation just comes in your body is crying it wants help but it doesn't know how to it, the body wants you to listen the body wants you to listen to your you know your own body and try to understand it but you don't understand what to do because you're not guided well and you know we in such scenarios what really happens is even if you're diagnosed you tend to say this word and use this word a lot i am fine anybody who ask you how are you feeling you know or how are you doing you'll be like i am fine but you don't know how many layers and masks are there beneath this i am fine i mean we can give different names to it chronic illness invisible illness chronic disease rare disease name of you more please and any doesn't matter is just you just can't explain it further you don't know what further is going on and over the top your mental and physical health is so correlated to such a major extent when it is usually neglected because uh, you know it's it's just a you know shift in your body both your mental and physical health is a part of your well being just going through these psychological issues and fears you end up having insomnia you can't sleep at night that guilt that okay what is happening i'm i'm just you know pushing myself into a bigger ditch and i have no idea why that anxiety leading to panic and depression and then you also believe okay maybe it's just psychological it has nothing to do physically that fear the fatigue everything just makes you jump in together you don't know where to go what to do and we need holistic and multidisciplinary approaches towards it i mean both these words might sound familiar to some some might not understand i wrote holistic slash multidisciplinary approach because many of these chronic illnesses can turn into comorbidities comorbidities as in you have one illness but because of that one illness another illness might join in 
for example anxiety and stress can also be covered in here and you don't need one doctor to help you here you need a team of doctors you need your current diagnosis doctor to help you further if it's a neurologic condition then a neurologist if it's a rare disease and it's genetic so you need somebody specializing in that and get a gene test and accordingly you know you're taken further which doctor will treat you if it's something to do with your gut you need a gastroenterologist if it's something to do with your spine or skeletal system or you know your muscles in general you need a pain specialist and um, if it's autoimmune you need rheumatologist but on the other hand other than these particular speciality you also need a further team you this is actually a concept which is followed outside in other countries where multidisciplinary approach and shared decision making is used as a medium to help the patients the best where you know your main doctor be it a neurologist rheumat endocrinologist gastroenterologist be whatever you know a kind of collaborates with the physiotherapist the nutritionist the occupational therapist whoever else you need the psychologist and they all work as a team to help you and this is actually called a multidisciplinary approach we don't have it in india we try many of us who are advocating and you know are blessed and linked with the right organizations such as ordi taking as example here might just get help here and might understand this approach and might find the right doctors and who would agree to build this team but at times you know that the the kind of i am a doctor but i'm saying this and it's real you know that burden that a doctor doesn't want to refer you to the other doctor why because mere paise kyun jaye why should i earn a little less sir i'll figure everything out but that, that is not how it works so you know we have uh, some people who end up having luckily a multidisciplinary approach but a lot of people can't can't are not able to i mean in holistic approaches towards it again your diet change and everything plays a major key role not just this understanding your illness you know what exactly your illness is doing to yourself why are you feeling this kind of pain and this excruciating feeling how you can work further towards it how you can make sure that you know your mental and physical when being is taken care of properly uh, many people use ayurveda as a treatment uh, some go for allopathy some go for uh, you know um, other approaches some people go to you know uh, these um, interventionists who do dry needling and acupuncture and, and yes it does help some but it's not necessary all this will help everybody some people need to get regular massages only to keep the vascular system working normal and all these together comprises of holistic or multidisciplinary approaches you need to fight and run through these issues i mean coming forward i want to share something that i did in 2018 okay so i want to pause you here don't i am a crps warrior so this is my personal chart that i made in 2018 just to understand where i am if you can see carefully i have mentioned on the top high note you know all the symptoms that i was going through physical and you know mental issues too like headaches anxiety confusion delusion yes and i mean other than that if you see that there are these uprises where i'm showing diet and exercise is helping somewhere pain episodes are going down a psychologist is needed a physiotherapist is needed i'm doing hydrotherapy you know and along with all this you know there are the my pain my pain specialist is involved with all of this now this makes an holistic and a multidisciplinary approach and um, you, i'll you know we don't really realize you know how much all this stress and anxiety can also aggravate a condition further that we don't understand that we need a balance again holistic approach comes in here but also we need coping mechanisms uh this image, i don't know how many of you can relate to it 
it stays pause and uh, if you see through my eyes it's actually a neural system and uh, it's just branching out and it's wonderful and beautiful in its way but on the other hand it looks a little drotty like you know it's sick the tree is sick it needs some help but it's not necessary that the help you might require is only through all the doctors and holistic approaches at times you just have to pause hold on you know we cannot afford to think too much about our illnesses because it will just drain us ourselves out and make ourselves sicker we have to listen to our bodies it's not okay that you know you just um, you know keep going further and not holding yourself further and not being okay with it no it's not and you know you need a lot of coping mechanisms to of your own like you really have to work and you know kind of make a deal with your body and your illness like put an extra effort to educate yourself about your condition so that you you can reduce your fear uh, probably practice meditation if it helps it can help you sleep better exercise but yeah definitely taking advice from your doctor and as much you can do on the other hand going to a mental health counselor or a psychologist for therapy and it doesn't mean that you have a mental health issue and that's your the reason you're going for therapy a lot of people go for therapy just to cope through chronic pain because uh, you know you can be put on multiple medications for sleeplessness insomnia depression and anxiety but at the end of the day if you're not putting efforts on your own and trying to understand better and working towards your body in a holistic way you're not going to go anywhere you need a clinical psychologist not because you actually have a mental health yes you can have but on the other hand there are very so many illnesses where you, know, you just need cognitive behavior therapy you need mindfulness and you need them just to calm yourself down just to understand and learn how to be composed even if your body is reacting flaring up acting up and it's just making it bad it can happen in a you know in a movie theater it can happen sitting and chatting with your friends it can happen sitting with your family it can happen at work but you need to learn and psychologists can help you understand these you know therapies and how to utilize them and how to cope and calm yourself down even in your worst scenarios your your chronic pain your chronic illness cannot be a reason for you know stopping you from going further in your life and you you no need to focus on your hair and now everything around you your surroundings what helps you best you are i mean don't and on the other hand one very important thing for most of these things many of us end up googling and i want to make this point because yes do google your illness if your doctor is not making you understand and if you do are not blessed with an organization or a support group which is helping you understand your issue but don't try to be your own doctor don't try to self medicate because maybe that very illness another patient got benefit from that medication but not every illness and every patient is alike and that very medication might just not be a boon for you it can be a bane for you it can make your scenarios worse so you really need to understand these issues maintain a balance and move forward and you know on a serious note be i am fine not for the society for yourself enjoy who you are the beautiful person you are inside and out respect yourself there might be multiple colors to your body as in multiple colors as in multiple symptoms happening and you know that excruciating and you know deliberate pain just killing you inside out but don't let it be a stopping point for yourself use that i am fine for yourself you know accepting yourself telling your body and letting yourself know that yeah you love your body no matter how it is it's okay for not to be okay accept each and every part of you you don't need acceptance for 
only that the un society understands you need acceptance from the angle that you understand it you accept it okay i have an illness because until unless you accept you can't move forward you will be in the state of denial where you'll go back to that gloomy old self just not able to understand what is happening and you'll be back to scale zero and it's never going to help you trust me i have tried myself it's not if i had i would have not been giving you this lecture here and trying to make you explain you know happily accepting yourself sometimes really help uh i'm not i'm i'll probably take you know uh, another example here uh so i have crps and i made a deal with my body and i made this art piece just to from the angle of mindfulness just to accept my issues uh somewhere my psychologist was involved in it you know just to help me out understand and you know be okay with it and i made a deal with myself that you know no matter what is happening with me i'm fine with it i'm not letting it stop me and uh, okay my it's progressive doesn't have a cure right now mix of covid i kind of lost my leg movement thrice then i gained them back because i pushed myself i went i my physiotherapist helped me i helped myself by dealing with the pain and all the other symptoms and yet try, kept trying to walk because i am not yet ready to give up on my body so if i am not ready but i'm accepting my illness so my illness also should give me a slack right i mean why not i i deserve it and you know at times we just forget all these things because we think it's a very famous quote i think therefore i am and i use it a lot because we all think a lot and we sometimes just end up overthinking about everything dealing with the stigma and the society pressure and thinking that you know everything around us is going to just stop if we open up we'll get sacked because we have it and uh, you know thinking that you know you have to isolate yourself out rather i would say just stop overthinking rather make other people think you know make them see who you are what you are and don't judge you with because you have pain issues or illnesses but on the other hand try to make them understand let those over exhausting thoughts that are killing you be thrown on them and let them know that okay yeah this is happening with me but i am still doing well and i have no issues with myself and if you don't understand it probably read if you want me to under make you understand my illness probably ask me a question before assuming that i cannot do this or that and if you don't take me seriously probably you can take this 90s cartoon character seriously i mean if you remember this and you were a kid 90s kid like me you know that raise i bro telling you you better understand yourself and better work on yourself rather than giving up because giving up is never going to take you anywhere on the other hand i have mentioned the word you know being a part of an organization or a support group this picture is actually from one of our workshops so we do these workshops in this guys of you know they are basically support group meetings but we use them as workshops we call them workshops because if we call them support group a lot of people due to the stigma and fear don't come out and um, i don't think you can see any sad face can you um we are the i mean um, it's from the same workshop and um, funny thing that happened was the food got delayed so we all started playing a game everybody just wanted food and this was literally mid of the workshop which was 2 hours later and most of them are pain warriors can you see any kind of you know um you know tiredness and stress just showing up in visible i mean just staying here probably you can see a few smiles you know listening what the other person is saying and just moving it we just you know randomly started playing a game and sort of like chinese whisper and we were all laughing despite the fact that the amount of exhaustion we had and we were comfortable a lot of people don't friends with each other a lot of people exchange numbers 
you know and uh, because they have similar illnesses or they have the same illness and you know they can understand each other and i really feel that you know support groups are actually very important support groups should be incorporated as a part of our life and it should be there again it is also part of multidisciplinary approach and um, you know many of us don't really realize it but in uh, you probably might have seen it in uh, movies you know those aa meetings for uh, addiction and all but again on the other hand there are support group meetings from the angle of illnesses and it is something that actually empowers the people not leaving them alone and sad in fact pushing them further and believing that okay you know i have a partner or a friend or a person in disguise and you know many times your support group just turns into your huge family they are there for you in your worst times and you you know even in your excruciatingly bad pain days and just writing and typing in your support group that you know i'm not feeling well today those multiple you know warm healing hugs and emojis that are sent to you at times also work the magic uh with this i just take an end to it and thank you very much for bearing with me yeah that was a very inspiring journey just to hear and i think one takeaway message for all of us is that everyone's pain is valid right yeah that was very clear from what you've said and yeah there are actually a few questions in the chat so anand says that he has um, pain left in the left part of his whole body while all of his reports are negative and his heart and mri mri report are also negative as uh, so much yeah, uh, yeah i i think uh, we all know the answer to it yeah in certain ways uh, uh may i know his name again please anand choudhury okay hi anand probably you uh, you know uh, most of these illnesses that i was talking about like mine my all my mri were reports were negative except the mri neurography that i got done which gave a little idea okay most of the times your blood reports and everything are normal because there is not an issue happening through those roots it might just be neurological which is not physical in that sense okay so uh, i actually can't answer you or your question properly because i would say that you know you need to go to a pain specialist because the way you're describing your pain he's the best person to tell you what you need yeah. and yeah there are quite a few compliments on the graphics that you presented today It was yeah so they say it was beautiful graphics communicating the message clearly and there's another question from deepika okay. can chronic pain be confused with psychosomatic conditions too or they can be overlapped okay yeah so this is actually a very important question you know uh, most of these illnesses are called invisible illness i o anand all medical reports are negative right and uh, he doesn't he still has pain so what really happens is um yes there are psychosomatic illnesses too but it's not necessarily important that the person feeling the pain is psychosomatic psychosomatic illness means that a person is just making it up none of these things are actually happening it's just here in his head for real and uh, people who are usually diagnosed with psychosomatic illness act actually have this tendency and you know that uh, they google things up and uh, just tell you that they are going through these symptoms but when they go to the doctor the doctor cannot see them as in if you are going to the right doctor and uh, you know uh, in these scenarios the, and i have come across this person and you know psychiatrists give a very clear notification i mean one day they are thinking they have uh, probably you know uh, a cancer or something and the next day they are like okay we have fibromyalgia and the other day i think i have something to do with my muscles that's psychosomatic illness okay where every day you are just changing your scenarios and depicting the symptoms and telling the symptoms of different different illnesses but in cumulatively when we are talking about invisible illnesses 
and here i'm not talking on mental health issues i'm talking about physical health issues conditions like rare disease and all genetic testing and all these lag and blood test reports from ana specifically ana says all these are lagging and at and that leads to a very wrong approach leading to a scenario where you have not done all the tests you've not ruled out all the illnesses and you've just tagged the person so this disparity is always there and a major reason behind this is that we still don't have doctors who are well versed in these conditions in our own country we rely on doctors outside a country and uh, you know the education around us is lagging for example uh, my illness got a definition in india it's uh, like 8 to 10 months back when complex regional pain syndrome has been recorded in world war 2 times also so now imagine the prehistoricness here that there are multiple uh, specifically crps dedicated organizations in uk us australia everywhere but in india we just got a definition for it so now imagine how the situation is that is quite that is like do you see any change you said you were diagnosed in 2014 right if i'm not wrong no 2014 was the time i got the uh, injury and okay i was diagnosed in 2015 okay 2015 so like at the beginning of the presentation you were talking about how there was a significant lack of data in india so from yeah. 2015 till now have you seen any considered change or yeah so i actually quoted the uh you know the recent uh articles like 2018 2017 i didn't uh, go back to the older data like there's a study done by dr gp doreja around the quality of life of a person living with chronic pain and this, that statistic they did it in five cities and the, the statistic states 13% now this study lag is just done in five cities in 2013 and it gives a general data of 13% before that there was not even one study done in india in fact uh, many people might not know aims delhi had the first pain clinic and dr gp doreja was the first person was the pioneer doctor who started the clinic in aims delhi around 30 years plus back yet we were never aware there are pain doctors called pain specialists i'm sure many of you still don't know that and if we go further till 2009 pain speciality was not even considered a course in india it was not a speciality taught in india like doctors used to go outside india to do fellowships anesthetic internal medicine doctors general physicians they used to go outside to turn into pain physicians and pain specialists and uh, since 2009 and in 2009 uh, there were like three colleges that started it just three colleges started the speciality uh, in one college three pgs are there so nine people might have enrolled that's it just you know three into three nine people that's it from there we do have a pain uh, you know uh, now it has gone further that you know uh, from a place where there was not even this it was not even recognized to gone to a phase where in 2013 we saw 13 person data and in 2017 and 18 we are noticing a data change of 19.3 percent and uh, uh, in the rural areas I, as i saw taught told you 65 percent but pan india there still uh, we lag a lot of studies uh, you quote numbers and you you know poke the ministry to you know look into it it's not a part of our census also okay. i mean it's no i mean uh, uh if you check census report the last census was done in 20 uh, 2011 if you will go through the data you will not find the burden from the angle of chronic illness if you will find something that will be just diabetes chronic heart res uh, you know respiratory issues and hypertension that's it you will not find any other data Okay. i mean there are a lot of organizations which are pushing it further that you should apply washington uh, technique to in the census so that we can collect the data of mental health patients and people suffering from chronic illnesses but yet it has not been adapted 
Yeah. Um, I think there are more questions. Yeah. Okay, so K Shama Gupta, I think. So she, uh, that person asks, is this disease more psychological rather than physical? Um, again, chronic pain is not a disease. Chronic pain is a symptom. So uh, there are certain conditions where, uh, for example, I'll take the example of fibromyalgia here. Fibromyalgia can be stress induced too. But a stress induced fibromyalgia can have a remission over time. Remission as in if their stress and anxiety is kept in control, their pain goes back away. But on the other hand, most of these conditions are physical and mental health issues just climb in the anxiety, depression, everything. There are actually a lot of studies which are gender uh, specific towards women where it has shown that post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which is considered as a mental health condition due to trauma, which could be domestic abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, which you have seen at an early age can lead to PTSD. Further PTSD leading to other conditions. And, um, but on the other end, the very thing that you don't have a diagnosis and you're living with that physical illness and you're not diagnosed but mocked so many times can also give you PTSD. So uh, probably I think I have answered your question pretty well. And on the same topic, the next question was uh, how to confirm fibromyalgia? Sentil asks that. Okay. So uh, if you really want to confirm you have fibromyalgia, firstly, I want to know, are you a person who thinks you have fibromyalgia? Or uh, you are just, um, uh, and you read it up, or you're just thinking, okay, my symptoms belong to it. Uh, because that's one thing that happens a lot. But on the other hand, if you're looking to get a diagnosis for fibromyalgia, I would really request you to reach out to a rheumatologist or a pain specialist, please. Because uh, fibromyalgia has a lot of angulations. Stress can lead to fibromyalgia. On the other hand, you uh, having a mental health condition like PTSD or bipolar or depression, clinical depression, you know, it can lead to fibromyalgia. But on the other hand, even getting a heavy fever, a high fever for three, four weeks, it has shown that it kind of reduces your immunity. So, and at that time, and it, you get struck by fibromyalgia. On So, it does have a correlation with autoimmune illnesses also. Sometimes fibromyalgia is just a symptom to higher conditions like Hashimoto or hypothyroid, hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. And you're not aware of it. Sometimes fibromyalgia can actually be a symptom to lupus. As in... You have lupus and with time you got fibromyalgia and you started having debilitating pain because lupus does plays with your body in multiple ways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Renuka asks how to help someone out with pain which seems to have no cure. Are CBD oils actually helpful? Can you please repeat it? Uh, I couldn't hear one part yes, of I'll it. Repeat it. How to help someone out with pain, which seems to have no cure? Are CBD oils actually helpful? Again, you have not mentioned what kind of a pain condition or diagnosis you have. Because again, all this depends on the very illness and condition you're facing. If you're facing something muscular or something like arthritis, probably CBD oil can help, but Again, without taking permission from your doctor, I would not suggest you to go with it. I would okay. really suggest you to talk to your doctor about it and, you know, figure out if it's not correlating with any of your medications because it can be and contradictory with a lot of medications. We don't have proper knowledge around it. Yes, CBD was a part of our Ayurveda back but then it was banned, like marijuana was banned. So CBD, uh, CBD and THC are the two components of marijuana. So CBD is the medical part and the uses of it were stopped and it doesn't exist properly in Indian system yet. So taking an advice from your doctor before trying any of these things will be really important. 
And she mentioned that it was fibromyalgia. Oh, okay. Probably talk to your doctor. You might be on painkillers and, uh, you know, CBD oil and painkillers can contradict with each other. Um, there is one more question by Surya. If I okay. sit for a while, I get pain on my pelvic areas. It takes some time to reduce once I stand for some time. How to overcome, please advise. I am a muscular dystrophy patient and a diabetic. You need a physiotherapist or a rehabilitation doctor here. What you're facing is kind of very common with muscular dystrophy because uh, you must be aware that musc in muscular dystrophy, it kind of impacts your uh, muscular system uh, in multiple different ways. There is muscle wasting also. So uh, keeping your muscles uptight, uptight as in how, you know, a normal person goes to a gym just to exercise and pump up and make biceps. The same way just to keep our muscles active so that we don't face that issue while sitting and all you need a physiotherapist or a rehabilitation doctor to help you out with it yeah so yeah. shama gupta has a question i have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia just three months back however the symptoms are there for last 22 years uh, at the moment, I do not know which came first, fibromyalgia or anxiety or depression, or a kind of a feeling of not performing well in life. How to identify this? Again, holistic and multidisciplinary approach. This is something I can't answer here. You probably have to connect with us and we need to get on a call probably and discuss it in detail and go forward with it. I mean, that's the best way possible for it and uh, thank you for sharing this ma'am i mean you kind of give the example that 22 years you did not know what you're suffering from and that's a lot of years to confuse a person but definitely give us a call or or you know drop us a message we'll be happy to help you and there is i think one last one by samida how do you think chronic pain can be explained to close friends or relatives? I'm a patient of fibromyalgia, EDS, and JIA. Ah, I think I'm really sorry, my friend. So you kind of, Samida, won the lottery. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry for it, but you are strong. I would say that. I mean, having EDS, lr syndrome, fibromyalgia, itself together kind of makes it a very complicated scenario see it's not necessary that you have to make them understand chronic pain itself you need to just make them understand that you are suffering through something okay you need to let them ask you questions you can't make somebody understand an issue or an illness until unless they have questions for it try opening up a little bit telling them okay i got diagnosed with something let them question you what happens to you and probably be a little open and vulnerable. Let them see you in your vulnerable state. Don't be scared that, okay, they'll judge me, they'll run away and all. Trust me, the people and those friends who are going to run away are not your long time friends. The people who are curious are asking you questions yet asking you, how are you doing? And still there for you are the people who you for a long term and you need that kind of friends for support not the ones who's gonna just run away so take it slow um there is one question by anita so she asks is there a directory of pain clinics across india for people to approach um well i don't think there is a directory for any uh, specialization in india where you can re directly reach you know the, the right doctors the, the kind of directory you can find is like applications like Practo, where uh, doctors actually uh, put their specialization and uh, categorize according to it. And I think Practo does have a helpline where they do that, that if you are not able to find a doctor, I mean, you're not able to figure it out. They do have the chat section. You can probably have a chat with a doctor before going and meeting that person, if you're scared to go and you know, this doctor might just come out wrong and just ask them that, 
you okay i'm going through this and they charge a minimal fees of like 100 to 100 rupees for that there are other other than practo there are also two three more websites like that also you can definitely reach out to you know organizations like chronic pain india ordi then you know there are other organizations and we can help you figure out how, how to reach the doctor because at, at the end i'm sure even ordi is maintaining sort of a directory of themselves like we maintain one to help people uh, she had also right. asked about online support groups that a person can join okay so uh vinita i want to ask you do you people have support groups um swami sir can answer that i think he's on okay. a call uh, so i'm yeah. not sure about ordia but yeah we do have support groups uh, and uh, uh, hi. yeah this is maya yeah uh, we do have a you know intention group wherein uh, we uh, we communicate about our issues uh, in the intention group so there are different kind of rare disease patient who talk about the kind of pain they have it's it's more like aa where you you discuss about your pain and then we go on to for a meditation session for 5 minutes so yeah that one support group uh, we do have yes so uh, thank you so much for answering that similarly we do have support groups too we do have one on facebook which is mixed and a lot of people with different illnesses are part of it like how they said rare diseases because here we are talking about you know the lesser bulk loads not classified and yeah we do have uh, support groups uh, and you can definitely reach out to probably if you have a rare disease you can reach out to ordi if you don't have a rare disease and you have some but it's something to do with chronic pain definitely please uh, reach out to us i uh, probably um, uh, you can uh, get a you know you can like drop a message to ordi or to us by finding us out and you know dropping us an email or something we can help you out that ways um swami sir i hope uh, that approach works well yeah it should definitely it should absolutely yes. thanks for that and i don't think there are any more questions but there are a bunch of compliments too that like a lot of people have said they feel less alone and thank you so much for this insightful presentation and yeah, yeah i agree with all of them too <laughs> yeah thank you so much i'm glad that i mean it helped yeah yeah so i guess that's the end of today's webinar session so on behalf of the entire ordi team i would like to thank you for spending your time with us and inspiring us with your own journey and the work that you've been doing it really brought a lot of insight upon you know chronic illnesses and the statistics or the state of that in india so i'm pretty sure everyone has a lot to learn from today's session so thank you again and yeah i would like to thank all the viewers who joined today and these webinar sessions have been going on throughout the pandemic so feel free to register for more and i would also like to thank our sponsor life cell diagnostics and the entire ordi team for their back end support thank you, thank you so much benita benita anuba thank you yeah thank, thank, thank you so much for inviting me okay okay, okay. yeah